Hey everybody, today we are going to cover this. It is a uh, uh, achieved with the mesh deformer. Um, it's something that I made for a project that I did not end up using, but I still think it's cool, so I thought it would be a fun one to cover. Um, all right, let's get into it. So uh, this is the file that um, I was using. And so you can see kind of what we're, what we're doing. Um, but we'll still walk through everything and build it from scratch anyways. Um, so let's just start with a clean file. So we need a cube. And then we need to th throw the cube in a Voronoi fracture. Uh, let's go to the point generator or the sources and then the point generator and the increase the point amount to whatever, you know, whatever you want. And then we're going to offset the fragments a little bit. And then uh, what we need to do next is create a copy of our cube. Let's put the Voronoi fracture in a null. Um, we can hide this cube for now because we don't need it. And then uh, on the cube that we're going to use as our kind of cage, our deformer cage, uh, we need uh, probably you know a decent amount of segments. Um, we'll start with that for now, see if that works. Um, what we're going to do on the deformer cube is we're going to use a formula. So uh, y radial is fine. Let's increase the height and then we can scale this. We can't see anything because we def definitely need more segments. So let's go with 100. Something like that. Uh, and then we can see the effect of the formula uh, deformer on the cube we're going to use as our cage. Um, I want it to go the other direction, not inward. I want it to go out. So if you change the U plus T to a U minus T, then it will go outward. Um, like I said, you know, you can scale it to whatever, uh, whatever size you want. And then also you can change the speed here by um, multiple, you could multiply the T in here by, um, or, you know, you could divide it, let's say T divided by five. We've slowed the, um, slowed the, uh, movement by a factor of five because T here, um, is the time variable, I believe. And so uh, you can change the time by modifying it like that, I believe. Let's, I can't remember what exactly this one does. Okay, that is the frequency, I believe. So if we lower this number, um, the frequency of the waves is going to change, but the speed will remain the same. Uh, and then this final number is, let's see. The, it looks like it's a height modifier. So um, height, frequency, time. Um, okay, that's all set up fine for now. And then what we need in here, back in our Voronoi, is a, um, a where is it, mesh deformer. Is if, if someone out there wants to make a... Uh, plug in or add on that will alphabetize these, I would pay $5 for it. So just putting that out there. Um, uh, yeah. So now we have our mesh deformer, which is what the mesh deformer does is it takes the information from one mesh, uh, and transfers it onto another. So in this case, we're going to transfer the motion of our cube that we just set up with the formula deformer and transfer that onto our 
Voronoi fracture, which it's going to work really well because these cubes are the exact same shape. Um, they don't have to be, uh, but it works really well if the objects are the exact same shape. So uh, the first thing we need to do is change the under the you have to go under the advanced tab of the mesh deformer and change it to surface and then um, drag our cube into the cages section and then click initialize um, why is that not working ah we need a connect object. I forgot about the connect object. Uh, okay. So um, we need our Voronoi in a connect object and then our mesh uh, deformer should work. Let's test it out to see. It is still not working. Let's reinitialize because we added the mesh deformer. And now you can see our Voronoi fracture object is being deformed exactly uh, like the cube that is uh, the um, cage for the deformations. So this cube is driving the deformations in this uh, in this Voronoi fracture. So this is cool because uh, it allows us to, you know, deform uh, the Voronoi fracture in a way that we couldn't if we were just trying to apply these deformers directly to it. And uh, what I also did uh, was. Um, subdivided the pieces um, here wait I think I put the whole thing in a subdivision surface yeah so you can see that they looked more like uh, round stones um, that way was kind of going for like a gem sort of a gemstone polished gemstone sort of appearance um and if we i think if we make any changes we would have to reinitialize our our mesh deformer so if we want to if we want to make changes then we have to reinitialize it um so here let's uh do that and then we can see it's working again. Um, yeah. And let's see if there's anything else that I missed in here. I think I, I keyframed the time. So we start with On uh, our formula, start with normal time, and then at, let's say, 40, 40 frames in, we will create a keyframe and divide the time by two. Looks like the the um let's try this. It looks like the cycle of the waveform uh for the formula deformer is by default at two seconds. So every two seconds it will repeat in the same, which makes sense, you know, if it's following a kind of like a sine wave shape. Um which it is, it's following a sine wave. So, you know, it takes two cycles for a sine wave to get back to its initial position. It goes up, back to the middle, down, back to the middle. Um, so that makes sense. And so if you want it to loop like, or uh, loop where you make the time change, make it on a two second interval. So my project is 30 frames per second. So I'm making it on the 60th frame. And you can see that we have that nice kind of slow-mo um, change there. And then uh, let's just do a camera with a high focal length, um, zoomed in 
pretty good here. And then uh, let's do some quick uh, render setup as well. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of what I had to set up in that other that other project file. And this was just using uh, two lights. So let's see what we can do here. Not going to want a background, I don't think. And um, let's just grab an HDRI from uh, the built-in library, the asset browser. Uh, Okay, um, we'll make a simple class material and uh, we can drop it on our um, on our connect object. And instead of uh, the, the subdivision surface is cool because you can visualize it, uh, what it will look like in the viewport, but we could also use um, the redshift object tag and I believe that should give us a similar look in the render. Let's see. Yeah, it does and it's even smoother. So that's cool. Um, and we, you know, we, oh, here, let's, uh, let's add in a little bit of uh, depth of field. So if you click this up here, you can click to focus so you click where you want the camera's focus to be and then uh, enable the depth of field and it will work um, this is for some reason going pretty slow but whatever um, you know so uh, we have our depth of field set up um, we can try making these metallic looking um, you know, with your dome light, you can rotate that around to find an angle you, you like, uh, let's turn off the metalness, turn on the transmission, let's turn down the roughness. Let's make these With glass, um, changing the HDRI or rotating it around is going to make a really big difference in how the the objects look because they're see-through, you know. So you see more of like what's in the background um, than you would if we, you know, turn turn the uh, transmission off. But. Uh, I think, yeah, the only th other thing I added uh, was a, oh, an infinite light um, in here. So we'll try to, to do that. Um, the infinite light basically just creates a, a light that is sent from a infinitely far away distance. Um, let, me, let me see if I can speed this up. because I don't like waiting for that. So what I did was uh, turned off out of frustum tessellation. So basically that means anything outside of the camera is not gonna get subdivided. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna limit the subdivisions even maybe to three to see if I can get it to be fast and still look nice. So yeah, that's fine. And it, it's much faster. So sometimes there's, it's just subdividing stuff way too much that you, you, you would never need that much. So just know that you can modify these numbers and uh, speed things up. So, okay, now we have our infinite light here too. Um, here, let me. Let's see. 
just get some additional uh, additional highlights in here, which are cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that you know that's pretty much it um, for this one. Uh, you know, I probably fine tuned the lighting a little bit more um, to look how I wanted it. And then, uh, but right now I kind of, uh, I like the look of this metal, honestly, more. And, uh, then, you know, yeah, you can go into the post effects and add some nice bloom here. And maybe like a LUT or something, you know, if you want to stylize the look here in the render and not not uh, color correct it after the fact. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just a quick little exercise in um, um, using the mesh deformer. And like I said, if you want to preview kind of what we're looking at, and the renderer just turn on that subdivision surface and it's still gonna run really fast in the viewport um so we created an object made it a voronoi fracture and created a copy of it applied some deformers to that in this case the formula deformer um, and used that in the mesh deformer as a cage and we enabled surface um, and hit initialize each time we made a change to the configuration. We had to remember to throw in throw the Voronoi in a connect object for it to work. And then we did some quick uh, lighting and rendering stuff. Um, that's it. And I hope you had fun with this one. And the project file will be available on Patreon. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.